you know. Uh, yeah, I decided to speak about Power Platform because it's quite quite complicated topic and quite big. So, and I hope it will be a fascinating story for you. Thank you for coming, everyone. So, uh, yeah, I would like to tell a few words about myself just to introduce myself. Uh, I think I have overall more than 10 years of experience in business domain and area like business consulting, software engineering and product development. And a couple of companies I outlined it here, I work for. The biggest one is definitely Microsoft. Uh, yeah, it was pretty nice experience working with them. Oof. Yeah, so what agenda I have prepared for you. So first of all, I would introduce Power Platform. At least I will tell you a couple of numbers and interesting facts. Secondary, we briefly review global trends and why it's really important. Secondary, we will talk about technical architecture. I mean, we will do a deep dive about Power Platform, how it interconnected with Microsoft ecosystems. Then I have prepared a couple of use cases where Power Platform might be applicable and how we can benefit from using Power Platform. Finally, I prepared some demo to see in action how you can leverage different Power Platform functionality to streamline business processes. And finally, I will, uh, if you would have any questions, so you can ask me. So Q&A session is the last one. So. Uh, yeah, it's pretty fascinating, you, you know, to be honest, working with this platform. Just a couple of interesting facts. Gartner nominate this platform as a leader in low code enterprise solutions. So, and one fascinating fact about this, almost 97% of Fortune 500 users. You can imagine the biggest companies on the planet are using Power Platform. So, uh, just just imagine the scale. So yeah, it's really really interesting fact. So uh, yeah, secondary, I would like to talk about global trends. I don't want to focus a lot. Just keep in mind that every year this segment is growing at least up to twenty percent. It's really impressive, right? So and by the end of this year, this global market will be grown approximately by 20 percent it's just talking about the role of hyper automation in this enterprise world so and how you can accelerate these different processes with low code solutions so yeah secondary i would like to talk about really fascinating stuff it's a power platform overview itself and it's quite interesting to mention that power platform is a part of broader Microsoft ecosystem. So, because when we talk about Power Platform, we also have to keep in mind that we have Microsoft ecosystem, Microsoft different products, not only Office 365, but also Azure, right? And it means that it forms one broader Microsoft ecosystem when all products are interconnected. And this is why Power Platform does not exist in isolation. It meaning it's form and closely, couply integrated with Azure, with Office 365 products. <clears throat> and we have a lot of capabilities how we can extend our platform using Procode development. Because here we are Procode developers, meaning we are using .NET, Azure technologies, right? To implement some cool stuff and deliver value to our clients. So, and talking in particular about Power Platform, what I want to mention. So Power Platform consists of five major products like Power Apps, which help you to build different application, both model and desktop application. We have Power Automate. I do believe many of us already aware and know because I do believe almost every .NET developers are working with Azure and we know what is it, uh, logic apps. And Power Automate is like a logic apps, but for, it's like 
are almost identical stuff, but a little bit simplified and have better UI UX experience, but almost the same stuff. At least under the hood, Power Automate is using uh, Logic Apps Engine. And second, our third product is Power BI. It's great analytical tool, which helps you to build really wonderful dashboards. Uh, also, Power Automate has capabilities. We can create virtual agents. I mean, with this visual drag and drop experience, because Power Virtual Agent is another product which helps you to define and build chatbots, I mean, quite easily. So, and any people with, uh, with, with, even with no programming experience can quickly start and start building something valuable and deliver to the customer. And secondary, I mean, last one is Power Pages. You know, Power Pages, if you know something about Wix, right, when you have, uh, this is also drag and drop experience when you can create site with the drag and drop different components and put them together. And by clicking one button, you can publish this website. Something similar is Power Pages. You, basically, you can create even React, React website, or you can use available out of the box components, combine them together and build beautiful website, something like that. Uh, yeah. And in addition to that, what worth to mention. So as you can see on this image, we have, just one second. Yeah, Power Platform enable you to deliver software much faster than ever before. First of all, because, because yeah, you can use this low code capabilities and they actually streamlines the development process. But besides that, you can also use like pro developer code first approach, meaning we still rely on API management, Azure function, we can use different Kubernetes services, logic apps, cognitive services, and it's really fascinating stuff because when you hit a limit with Power Automate, I mean, with Power Platform, you can go beyond by using standard Azure services, and it's really nice how you can combine and link together different services to create even more value to the customer. Yeah, and you know, Microsoft promote pretty interesting concept of fusion development team, meaning when you bring together so different people, you create diversity, right? Because because you can have stakeholders who can deliver and create some software, some application, it's, it's really fascinating. These people who do, do not have a real code experience, but still can create meaningful application using low code. They called citizen developers or just makers. It means they do not have real coding experience with JavaScript or .NET, but they can, by using visual editors, they can create and automate some business processes. And it's really interesting stuff because pro, pro developer, I mean, professional developer, they can build web services. They can build reusable component, you know, like React component or you can build web services. And then these web services and components can be reusable. I mean, they can reuse in applications. So, and for makers, we build foundation, you know, like web services, React components and stuff like that, which is fully hosted in Azure. And then these makers can consume this, yeah. And it's really interesting concept. So, because in the project you can involve different parts or different stakeholders, different people with different domain knowledge, with different expertise. So it meaning you can deliver and drive the innovation much faster. So that you can deliver a result and solve real problems because your team does not exist in isolation. You are closely work with business stakeholders, with IT engineers, with pro developers. So, and it's really nice because the biggest companies in the world are using this approach. Like Accenture, which have more than one, not one, and almost more than, uh, I, I forget 
exact number, but the biggest company are using, so just, sorry, forget exact number of employee, but it doesn't matter, so. Okay, we can move to another slide and underlying technologies of this power platform is Dataverse. It's interesting because it's kind of polyglot data storage. You can store data in any type. I mean, you can store semi-structure, structure, unstructured data. And it's really fascinating because in addition to that capabilities, you also have really sophisticated security model. You have different events, logic, and great analytics tools. And for pro developers, why it's really important, what you should care, because you can extend by using the latest technologies like Web API. You can use uh, Azure Function, Azure Service Bus. I mean, it's kind of microservice architecture. I mean, but you can end up, so when you have many different services and you have API gateway, yeah, and it's really, really, really fascinating. So, because Dataverse gives you this flexibility. It's fully run and extend with Azure. Uh, yeah, as you can see on this diagram, just high level diagram, how it works internally, what is happening behind the hood. And it's quite, quite, quite interesting stuff to be honest. Uh, okay, let's go to Power Automate. As I have recently mentioned, Power Automate is a cloud service. It's based on top of existing Logic Apps engine, but it's giving you more flexibility and more user-friendly interface. So, and idea is next. Right now, available more than 1,000 different connectors. So you can, yeah, do you remember when we struggle with some integration, when you need to talk to different web services, you need to synchronize data. So, and right now it's not even, an issue anymore. So you can easily bring together two different systems. I mean, but just, I want to emphasize it's only worse if you need to orchestrate some business processes. It's not when you need to migrate million of data because this we have another tool, but when you need to orchestrate some business processes, and I will show it a bit later, it's a great tool. And for pro developers, how you can basically extend if you have RESTful API web service, you can also use Azure API management, Azure function, you can create custom connectors. If it makes sense, yeah. Okay. And also one major part is to deliver user-friendly interface. We can do it with Power Apps, which basically contains two different parts, like Canvas app is used to create beautiful, mobile-friendly, mobile-first experience and interface, when model-driven apps are used to create like enterprise-level, different sophisticated and really complex business applications. So, and you can expand them with React component using TypeScript, JavaScript, and stuff like that. So, okay, I do believe I just finished with Power Platform Overview. Yeah, it's, yeah, I, I was thinking, to be honest, what to include because topic is quite broad and I just decided to give you essential information just to, yeah, to make an impression what our platform is. So, and second topic would be about use cases, how you can bring together information that I have been talking about, and how you can build different kind of and type of systems. So, uh, in this topic, I will show about use cases and patterns which you can apply and what type of applications you can build, bringing together Power Platform and Azure and different technologies, yeah, like React, even AI capabilities. So you can bring all of this together quite easily. I mean, relatively, of course. Yeah, for instance, first, pattern called IT democratization. As you can see, it's pretty straightforward and almost all of us have built an API many times. Just imagine you building an ordinary API, you connect it to API management and what is happening next, you need to create some user interface, right? And 
typically you could create it with uh, yeah we have different choices you can choose react or angular or stuff like that or you can choose and build on top of our apps because you can easily connect with the slow code to any existing uh, data if you created connector you just expose this and can be easily used in canvas application which i will show you in the later how we can achieve this stuff it's pretty easy and pretty straightforward so, and this button just show pretty simple use case so how you are building an api you are adding this api to api management and then you create connector on top of this api and then you can consume this data for this connector is become available to your model to an app that you can add it as data source and it's really interesting it's kind of you know kind of pattern which you can think of it's like when you have microservice architecture you build different microservices. you have gateway and from another side side of ui you have like micro front end when you can drag, drag and drop different components this component will consume data from this web service this component will consume data from this web service it's like imagine this two you know this two uh, architecture approach like micro front end and microservices so that's why it's really 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 exciting so yeah secondary you can consume and work with even driven system and architecture based on my experience like i remember when i was working as locking company and client come to us and he was from uh it was transport company and they have to deliver a lot of very expensive stuff it was if i'm not mistaken vaccine and they have to deliver this vaccine and one important and crucial moment when you deliver a vaccine you have to maintain certain level of temperature so and you have to make sure that your refrigerators work fine i mean and if something goes wrong you have to immediately practically detect something goes wrong you know if temperature temperature goes certain threshold you have to send notification and you need to proactively manage this right because otherwise vaccine will die <laughs> i mean and you, you have to pay a lot of a lot of money you know and it's a case when this uh ma machine i mean when you have to collect a, a lot of data you need to transform collect and proactively proactively react like in case if temperature goes uh goes down certain threshold you you need to send some notification system some guys have to pick up and just do some stuff to repair or just to yeah, to do some revision to stuff like that so and you can automate this process with power automate like it's how you can bring together iot devices azure and power platform as you can see there is a show i mean on this diagram you can show this high level approach how to handle stuff like that so you can send notification to to the teams through virtual agent yeah it's it, it's 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 really cool stuff uh, oh, sorry secondary yeah I, I i choose only free pattern free use cases but in reality it's much more just to giving you some brief introduction how you can bring together these different pieces you know one very common use case when you need to expose data which is hosted on your on premise system and basically you can do it for api gateway which you can install i mean and you can then transfer your data make it publicly available so and it's, it's really interesting and common to use pattern when you have on premise systems Right, which is crucial, critical for business. But business wants to innovate. They bring something really innovative, and but they cannot simply because of some reason get rid of this on-premise data. It might be different reasons. So, but just assume we have this requirement. So we cannot replace on-premise systems because they are poor for their businesses. But they want to innovate. So that's why we can bring together azure and power platform we can install 
API gateway, and then we can, you know, adding this expose this data through API management. And as far as we have Azure ID, you know, because first of all, we have to understand we have really complex security, uh, security metrics and security functionality built on top of this. We have Azure AD, right? Then we have in Power Platform really sophisticated security metrics. So, and we can ensure that our data secure it. I mean, it's quite, quite important. So just make sure we do not leak any private information, which is hosted on premise services. Yeah. It was brief overview because finally I'm going to, I'm going to talk about demo, which I have prepared as this demo illustrate one process. I, I, I decided to choose this process because most of the us applied for job at least once, right? Because if you are in soft server, it means you apply or you or someone have contacted you. And just imagine you are looking for a new job. So, and you found the job of your dream and you want to apply. It can be done in many different ways, but for this use case, just for educational purposes, I choose like Robota UA, meaning you've just found some job, job, job that looks attractive to you and you would like to apply, meaning simply sending CV, uh, what I would like to be happen here. So first of all, I need to extract resume, right? So secondary, I would like to store this CV to the blob storage. And when CV is saved to blob storage, then I would like to run AI model to extract essential information like your first name, last name, experience, skill set. Uh, and afterwards, I would like to create the card of candidate in our system. Yeah. Secondary, I would like to send notification to the teams. If you know what adaptive card is, you can kind of create micro apps in the teams and you can react, meaning you can do some actions immediately. You don't have to go to the director to the system. You can make decision. I mean, you can review candidate profile. It's important for project manager or HR specialist or someone who making decision if it's right candidate or not. So you can immediately by clicking two buttons, you can make action, meaning reject application, sending some response back to uh, to, to to applicant, to candidate. Yeah. And it's something I'm gonna demonstrate it, it right from right now. Okay. Okay, okay. For this testing purposes, fake vacancy, you know. And just let me open my let's say let's say CV. Okay, I just found some CV and I would like to apply for this job. So Okay, here we go. Uh -huh. Yeah, I just applied. Let's see. Let's wait a couple of seconds. Yeah, I have created Power Automate flow. It's just constantly listening what is happening on this inbox. 
yeah, you can easily connect to Outlook to exchange, right? And you have a trigger when new email is arrived, you can set up concrete mailbox. Please listen all emails coming to this and please include all attachment and only trigger when this email has an attachment. So it is basically what is happening here. Yeah, we see the 20 seconds ago, it was successful around. Yeah, the idea behind this low code solution is that you can do more with less. I mean, it's, 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 it's pretty, pretty fascinating because you can just double click, you can easily listen what is happening, what is, I mean, what, what emails are coming to your mailbox and you can immediately extract CV and push them to the blob storage. Like we have candidate CV, blob storage. Yeah, it, 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 it's, it's, it's really, 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 really interesting. Yeah, because sometimes you don't have to, to code a lot. Yeah, my CV is here, modified it today, two minutes ago. Okay, nice. And we also have another Power Automate flow and this one, this one. Yeah, it's interesting because you can easily train AI model our platform has low code capabilities to use ML and AI, and you can easily add and make your app intelligent. You can train model. I mean, it's essential to understand behind the hood, it use all Azure services, right? Because this platform built on top of Azure services, but it gives you low code capabilities to deliver and to develop much faster with these low code capabilities. And you can create different models directly in Power Automate, or oh, sorry, in Power Platform. As you can see, we have AI Builder. You can basically train and build different types of models here in this sample, what is happening here. When you see we save it to this blob storage, we extract content and meaning passing it down to our model, which uh, which was trained to recognize resume and extract, and extract essential information from CV. So uh, I, I just briefly mentioned how it's built because you know, guys, it's, yeah, it's another broad topic, how to build and train ML model. So can I, yeah, here is just an example how I handle CV, how I parse and extract essential information like first name, last name, position, education, current employee. I mean, it just for testing purposes. So we can see something can be done, done quite easily with this low code solutions and yeah. And what is happening, we can add this is candidate to our system and send send adaptive chart to the teams, which is done in a few clicks. And it's really exciting because you can do and orchestrate some complex process by dragging different connectors together. And and it's you don't I mean it's if you remember about fusion development, it's exactly the place where fusion development come into the play. So, because you can basically, what you can do as professional developer, you can, for instance, build an API and custom connector and just citizen developers can easily use your connectors. I mean, because Teams is also a connector. You can build your own just to do some job, which is important for you or consume your web service. And you're just giving ordinary user, you enable them to, 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 to do some meaningful job to, I mean, to innovate by simply uh, simply creating wrapper around your API. So it doesn't take 
much effort. You can create once and they will reuse this connector. Okay. What was happening here? I expect to right now to see one, yeah. Just new card has arrived and I have to refresh. It's a new feature to be honest, when you can create micro app. What I have done here, I created micro app, which is called adaptive cards. And for instance, project manager or whatever who is interested in this particular candidate or who is taking care of this vacancy or of this account, he can easily review new job application and take action. So meaning you can process much faster and giving meaningful response to any candidacy. So what is happening here and what action you can take from here? So you can open CV. Yeah, we, we know that our CV was saved to Azure Blob Storage. So we can just provide a loop for Azure Blob Storage. You can also schedule an interview directly from Teams because as I mentioned, it's like a micro app which you can create. You can, for instance, by double click, you can create an interview, for, in, for instance, a screening, you can choose date. It's just an example, right? Just for demonstration purposes, how you can bring together the different products from Microsoft ecosystems, like Azure, like Microsoft Team, like Outlook, our platform, just to deliver more value. Uh, and for instance, you can reject an application. And it's a really cool feature because you can do it like, sometimes you don't have to go to system, open the record. You would like to make some action immediately in, in teams like approve, deny. So something that you, yeah, I don't wanna reject. Anyways, this functionality doesn't work. And you can open complete candidate profile. And I prepared and built this system just to demonstrate how model-driven app can look like. So for instance, you can open, yeah, it's model-driven system. I mean, it's part of our platform. We can build quite easily system like that and you can enhance them with Azure, you know? Yeah, I just opened this candidate profile, stuff like that. Yeah, what you might be interested in, uh, let's, let me show you, for instance, I also prepare one, another use case, how you can, for instance, create a wizard and bring together, so data from different resources. Oh, sorry, not this one. Uh, I scan to it. Uh, yeah, I, I just built this wizard for demonstration purposes. I will show you in a minute how it works behind the hood. But it's all built with low code, but in reality, it's combination low code and pro code. I will explain a bit later. And it's interesting, I can easily integrate OpenAI uh, with custom connected. So let, let's find we looking for some junior power. Power platform developer. Job. Four. Yeah, sorry guys, I didn't add any pinner or loader because I was run out of time. Yeah, but anyway, it will be great illustration how you can, yeah, we just generated this code with OpenAI and it was quite simple. Yeah, and what is interesting here, you can build such wizard 
with low code. I mean, even project manager can build, you know, but in, in reality, all these components are built with React and it's really fascinating how you can, you know, bring together these two different worlds, low code and proper developers, and what you can build. I, I, I mean, it's, it's, I'm really excited about this stuff. Uh, it's how this editor looks like. I mean, if you remember, I mentioned briefly about microservices architecture, about micro front end, and just imagine how you can, how, how it comes in, into the play. So uh, here I have added and created connector, which talks to OpenAI. Yeah, connector is just a wrapper, right? Around an, any API. You can take existing API, instead of consuming it directly, you can create wrapper. It meaning you can, just wait a second, I will show you, I will show you in action so what is happening here. So, uh, and how we basically generate a uh, job description. So as you can see, all this stuff is built with low code. Here is, we have different, code components, it means all these components are built with React. What you are doing, so you are just building different components, can be React components, you import these components to, to this studio and you just simply drag and drop them. It meaning you enable uh, flexibility for someone who will be building like for citizen developers, but for you, like for .NET developers, for instance, you can also build some web services based on Azure or web API, so it doesn't matter. So, what would happen next? You would like, uh, not probably not you, but customers or uh, stakeholders would like to use your APIs that you have built, right? And they would like to consume these APIs, these awesome services. So what they can do, so they can add this data, like add connector, it could be it could be anything. As you can see, there is available a ton of connector. You can talk particularly to one thousand services, which is generally available. So now one thousand services. It means you can easily talk to Azure Blob Storage. You can talk to Azure DevOps, to Azure ID, Azure App Services, Azure Automate. It meaning just imagine how many processes you can automate. Uh, we as developer, for instance, might be interested in DevOps, how we can automate this part, how we can get notification, how we can even approve code review from our teams. I mean, or how you, you, you can review some comments on the respond and you don't have to go, for instance, to, to, to Azure DevOps. If you are, in, 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 I, I don't know, in any public transport or you are walking, you can just can approve something just looking at your teams. It's just an idea which I just generated right away. And as you can see how many connectors are, are available and you can build your own, you can contribute, you can automate almost, I uh, say so literally almost everything. Uh, uh, okay, let's, let's take a look at this example to be more precise and more practical. Yeah, I, I just added integration with OpenAI wrote simple prompt and develop connector. So you can see we have used, I have used chat completion API. I specify model, turbo. I define different roles like assistance and you said you are helpful assistance. We can skip it for now, just I just, gave command that his helpful assistance if he needs to generate job description for some set company. And finally, we are passing down user. We are defining role, passing down prompt. I can skip it for now. We are giving back a result, and just return it back to, 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 to our application. It's, it's pretty straightforward how you can add integration to OpenAI or any other services. So just literally, you need a couple of hours just to make it work. 
and you create these components which can be reusable and can be used across your all, all, all organization and every employee can benefit from it. So, yeah. And secondary, I would like to show you, for instance, how application admin center looks like. As you can see, there is basically a place when you can manage different environments, uh, when you can add integration with, with another Azure resources, like you can export your data to Azure Data Lake, or for instance, if you collect metrics, you can export your data to application inside and you can use Azure Data Explorer to monitor what is happening with Power Automate. And it's 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 really cool because all these services are they are interconnected. So and so this is SaaS application, so you can constantly monitor the number of your active users, your API call, uh, API base, pass rate limits. So a lot of information are available for you as for administrators. So you have full control and full understanding what is going on, what is happening. So yeah, and you can just looking at that, you can take proactive action. Uh, it, it is a admin center and it's also interesting to show how actually place for power. Yeah. How Power Platform Studio looks like. You see, we have a ton of different components. We can build chatbots. We can define our custom AI models. If you're interested in this stuff, there are plenty of new models which you can add and train. You know, like. You can detect uh, sentiment analysis, category classification. So yeah, it's it, it has a lot of practical use cases, how they can be applicable. Uh, you can detect language. It's really cool, o OCR, object detection. So you kind of using this low code, you can train your own model. And as I mentioned, behind the hood, they still will be using Azure services. Or you can directly train model in Azure and add it here. Uh, yes, basically a, a, a lot of stuff. This is adaptive card, which I have created just for demonstration purposes. It how it looks like as an adaptive card. You also create them. No, not you, but I mean, citizen developer or maker can create adaptive card and yeah, just to send some information. Uh, yeah, it's 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 fun. It's fun. Uh, Okay, guys, if you have any questions so regarding this our platform, it was, yeah, I was hurry, hurry up, most probably. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, it's just an, an overview really fast. Uh, yeah, if you have, if you have any questions, do not hesitate, just ask me, so.